Do you need answers? Is there a need for a true spiritual and prophetic encounter with God? Join Dr. Candice Smitherman and various relevant prophetic voices from around the world. Become enlightened as we walk down the true road to an authentic spiritual encounter. You will experience the glory of God with Dr. Candace and the Glory Road Show. There is a great shift that's happening, and the Lord is saying, it's time to get up and move. I've enlarged your territory. Now, before I talk to you specifically in Scripture about enlargement of territory in accordance with the Word of God and how that's relevant to the times and seasons, I'm an Issachar prophet, so I know exactly the times and seasons, what God is doing every single week prophetically and in accordance with the Hebrew calendar. If you follow my Facebook page or my YouTube every week, I bring a word of exactly what is happening now and getting ready to happen in the next seven days before I come back again and tell you exactly what God is setting up. I not only prophesy through hearing the voice of the Lord, but I prophesy in accordance with scripture, but in accordance with the Hebrew calendar, okay? There is literally a cyclical function that is taking place in the earth that when we understand the Hebrew calendar, we can prophesy correctly because we know what it is that he is doing, okay? So the word that I bring today is not only relative to if you may have a prophetic gift, or of course we're all prophetic people, you may be sensing these things, but you may not have necessarily the tongue to articulate what you're feeling in the spirit realms. But I believe today you'll grab a hold of that tongue and also have the scriptures to support the shift that God is making in the earth. Hallelujah. So prior to coming here, right before leaving, the Lord spoke to me from Exodus chapter 23. Exodus chapter 23 has seven blessings of the Passover. We just came through Passover, right? We actually just finished Passover on Wednesday, the, I'm sorry, uh, Thursday, uh, April 13th at sundown is when Passover was complete. So prior to Passover and during that time, God began to speak about the fact that he was releasing an angel into the earth. And this angel's name was Vigilante. And I say, when I heard that, I say, Lord, Vigilante. Okay, that's like, mm, I got to look that up. <laughs> like, I know what a vigilant person is, but what exactly is a Vigilante. Well, he said a vigilante is one that is coming in to an environment that has a current legal system already established. But the vigilante can, comes in and says, this system isn't working for the plan and purposes for which it was set. So I'm going to come in and use my authority and change it up. Basically, that's the definition of a vigilante. So in accordance with Exodus chapter 23, verses 27 through 32, the word tells us specifically for this time of year. When we have crossed over Passover, we enter in, we're here in this month of Nisan. We won't enter into the month of ER until uh, next Saturday, I believe it is. And so we are here in the month of Nisan, which is the first month of God's calendar year. That's what he spoke to Moses and Aaron in Exodus chapter 12, verse 2. He said, let this be your first month of the year. Why did he say that? He spoke that to Moses and Aaron because he was leading them out of Egypt. He was leading all the people out of Egypt, and he wanted them to start a brand new month. He did not want them to be on the same system of Egypt. So he said, we are starting a brand new thing. Come on, I'm writing it out in Exodus chapter 12, verse 2, okay? So for us, the people of God, we've entered into a brand new month, all right? So this month of Nisan is the entrance into what's called the spring rains. After we cross through Passover, which has just happened, all right, we move toward Exodus 23. That's why this is a relative word for now. So when the Lord spoke to me and said, I'm releasing an angel into the earth called Vigilante. And he said, this is in accordance with Exodus 23, which says, I am taking you into a new land and I am sending an angel with you to make preparation for that land. 
Now listen, you each have your own individual lands. We have individual cities, individual states. We have the United States, and then we have nations, all right? So when you hear this word, relate it to all aspects, not only of yourself personally, receive it personally, but receive it all the way for your nation even, okay? It's relative to all. So technically, you personally entered into a new land, and with you came a new angel to prepare a place for you in the new land. That's one of the seven promises of this time. That's powerful. Then the Lord says, I'm going to be an enemy to your enemies. He, sa- he also talks about uh, giving you prosperity and increase. He says, no one will be barren in the land, and no one will be sick. Okay? That's what he says. Then he says, I'm also going to give you this land. And this is Exodus 23, verses 27 through 32. He says, I'm going to give you this land. And with it, I'm going to only give it to you little by little. Because if I give you too much of it, the wild beasts will raise up and they will come and kill you. He says, I'm going to give the inhabitants of the new land to you, but I need you to be strengthened little by little because the place I'm taking you is way too big for you to handle in one moment. Now, this is how it's relative to you personally, okay, but also us as a church as a whole. So the fact of the matter is, I declare and I decree today, you have been called into a new land. This new land is going to look different from everybody, but the new land also for us is kingdom-based. So what God is saying is I've moved you into a new season and a new land in which I will give it to you little by little because I want to strengthen you so that the things that are currently in the land will not eat you up. Okay? So I need you to pay attention to your soul right now. Because if you ever want to take territory, God will never give it to you without first revealing to you what areas in your soul are not expanded enough for the territory that he wants to provide for you. Right? Third John verse 2 says, may you prosper and be in good health even as your soul prospers. When Moses and Aaron were called to begin to take the people forward, they had to have enough work done in their soul before they stepped in to taking a whole nation with them into the promised land. In our soul, we have constrictions of our faith. Our faith is constricted in certain areas. We have fear. We have shame. We have anxiety. We have insecurity. We have weakness. We have guilt. We have sin. We have things like this that are in our soul. And little by little, each year, God says he's going to expand us, right? And he does. This is part of spiritual maturity because we come back around to Nissan every year, all right? So every year, you're going from glory to glory to glory. And every year, God is giving you more territory, but he's also revealing to you the areas that need to be changed before you step in. See, you have a vision of where God is taking you, but the soul has to be worked on in order for the completion of the vision. Right? So, God says, I'm, this is the prophetic word, I'm enlarging your territory. And this is in accordance with scripture this time of year. You don't need to question it. You don't need to go home and look in the mirror and say, but I don't see no enlargement of territory. It's not what you see. It's what he said. And he said, it's this time of year. I'm enlarging your territory. Okay? And believe me, I guarantee he is. Because you might say to yourself, well, I don't know in the natural, but you know what? In the spiritual, he's enlarging your territory. See, he's got to prepare this before you can have that. All you beautiful people that were commissioned this week still have this to deal with for that that God spoke over your life. 
You were commissioned and called, set a point and anointed for the job at hand. We even saw it this morning. God will speak to us where he's taking us, but the work that has to be done between the word and the vision fulfillment is a lot of soul work. A lot of soul work. In this time and season that we live in, character is the only thing that is going to carry you through the destiny and enlargement of the lamb that is God, God has called you to. I'm speaking to you as a mother, a spiritual mother. I'm speaking to you as one who's been challenged by God in this area over the 25 years I've been in ministry. I'm talking to you to say to you, you have a vision that God gave you of the land and you're stepping into it again. But open your eyes because there's things he wants to deal with. You have to be willing to go to the places that he wants to deal with you on. Because it's little by little that you take the land. Each wild beast you'll learn how to kill and then you'll be strengthened for more territory. That's right. We know Joshua was commissioned by God after Moses to take the people directly into the promised land. But what happened when he got there is immediately he was faced with a war. Right? Not only did, he, did God tell him, Joshua, you're crossing over. Time to go over. We're going to circumcise everybody in this place. Can you imagine a bunch of circumcised warriors? We're going to circumcise you. We're going we're gonna to get rid of everything that's not pure. And then I'm going to take you into this land, but then get your swords ready. Because the first thing you're going to do is you're going to face a fight. And he says, but you will now eat from the fruit of the land. This means that God says, for the 40 years that Moses had the people in the desert, which we are about to enter into in the month of Er, in the month of Sivan, what do we see in the word of God? But manna coming from heaven, quail in their front yard. We see water come out of a rock. We see some of the greatest miracles you can imagine. Why? Because God was saying to them, I love you so much, and I'm giving you this land and everything in it, but I'm training you in relationship with me. It took 40 years for them to trust God, for the transition to finally have enough strength to fight the enemy for the land that was theirs that God said, I'm giving you to possess it, but you got to fight for it. Come on. There is nothing that God is calling any of you to in this house in the world today, because it's a prophetic world for nations. There is nothing God isn't calling nations to that will not take a fight. This is why vigilante, the angel being released in the earth today, is so very, very important. Now, when I was at the conference, the HIM conference, they had a bunch of different um, you know, ministry leaders speak. And we watched prophetically God do this, but um, Cindy Jacobs got up one morning that Lou Engel spoke, and she said, I know God has released a new angel. Then I heard somebody else talk. I know God, I can't even remember who it was, I know God has released a new angel. And I'm like, yeah, mm-hmm, yes, yeah. Accordance with the word of God, in accordance with Exodus 23, it's an already done deal. So if God's going to release a new angel in the earth to fight, he's expecting his people to raise up for a fight. That's right. Now, there's different ways to fight, but one of the things that God has given me, even over the last couple of days, which is a deposit I want to make into you right now, is he's called you to this great thing, this great work here in this house, this great work in this state. Some of you have governmental anointings on you, and God is calling you to shift into governmental areas. God is calling you to move into some type of state government. God is calling you to be stretched into levels of working in businesses and, and out in the public. And with this, you have to understand that one of the devils we're fighting now that has become very, very relevant, and especially because of our society today, 
is the devil of significance. Okay, now hear me clearly. So ev today, everybody can be significant. It doesn't take much, right? I mean, just throw a picture of yourself up on TikTok and put a, put a few things down there, right? And if what you got to say has any relevancy, people are going to come back and listen to it. So all of a sudden, you're significant, right? Now you have some people listening to what it is that you have to say. Now, this is a global issue, right? Because everybody is significant according, in accordance with God, and everybody can try and be significant. But what God is looking for today is significance in him. Now, humanity has a desire to be significant in and of itself. I'm important. I have value. God has called me to a vision. He's anointed, appointed me. He's called me pastor. He's called me apostle. He's called me doctor. He's called me whatever. I'm not talking about me. I'm talking about all of us, right? Okay? So when God speaks a vision and he attaches something to it that we can relatively grab a hold of, immediately we come into a world of determining our significance for the thing that was said. So that little crack in the door does one of two things. It either builds us up or it creates turmoil in our life. Because then we realize, oh, I don't cut what they just said. Now, I would like to say to you, if you're one of those people where the crack came, somebody spoke something into your life, God began to deposit that in, and you go, mm, I'm not sure about that, you're safer. You're safer. Why? Because you'll search for your significance in him. And this is what he wants at this time. See, he doesn't want us to go and take the promised land, you know, rip through this nation, do all of these kinds of things without order and alignment with him. This is why he sent Vigilante. It's because Vigilante, the angel, says, listen, God says he wants to do something in the earth today, but we have to line up with God. And so he takes the jurisdiction where things are out of control, though they've called it laws, and he, instead he says, but I come on behalf of the authority of the king, and these are the people of the king, and they will come into order and alignment with him. Now, when Jesus was called into his destiny in Matthew chapter 4, what happened to him prior to being called into ministry? He was tempted by the devil. There was three different ways he was tempted. Technically, that comes down to provision, protection, and acceptance. In other words, the enemy was trying to find in Jesus what would be the weak areas that would cause him to stumble as he began to pursue his ministry. Do you understand how taking the land, when God says, I'm enlarging your territory, he says, I'm quickening you for what can take you out in the end. I'm going to crack the door a little bit so that you'll see, and what you'll find is that you're insignificant. And it will hurt because you'll say, oh, my God, I'm going to trip this thing up. Oh, my God, I tripped it up. You opened the door and I already tripped it up. I, I already took money for that thing. I already moved over in this direction I shouldn't have. I already said this and I shouldn't have done it. And the Lord says, you know what? That's okay. Because you got tripped up as soon as I opened the door. Now let me reveal to you your significance in me. And then... You can take two more steps forward through that gate and keep on marching. You see, he wants us to, to do all of that. Why? To, to take that land. Why? Because the glory of the Lord comes when we have the knowledge of God and his ways. The Israelites were effective at what they did. Why? Because the leaders listened to the strategy of God in a moment. Moses and Aaron listened and did what God said amongst all odds. 
Joshua listened to what God said amongst all odds when it made no sense to march around Jericho seven times that the walls would fall down at the sound of a trumpet. But each man and woman of God was seen by God based on one thing, and that was their faith. Their faith. Their faith that then produced a response that could move a nation. You see, if we're going to change our nation today, if we're going to change the world for Jesus, then we have to know who we are in Christ, and we have to know we have significance only in him, and step forward and be vigilant knowing we have a slew of heavenly hosts behind us to accomplish this task. Folks, there is, we are closer now than we ever have been to revival and reformation since the Jesus revolution, right? Right? We, we're right there. We're seeing it happen all over, right? But we don't want to just have revival. We want to have reformation, right? We want to have an awakening of the unbeliever before the unbeliever is going to flock into the, to the churches or before the unbeliever is going to see the evangelist on the street. The evangelist has to become so on fire for God and so focused on him and so much of a strategy and seeing only their significance in God. What if you put on a great event and nobody shows up? Are you significant or not? Was it significant or not significant? Only God makes that determination. But you see, we base our factors not on the same thing God does. If you're not willing to take a risk, then you're not going to make it in the here and now. Revival means riskiness. Let me just teach you something, okay? Because I know these things firsthand. Because I'm a mother in the faith. Because I don't want to see you guys. I want to see, I want to see the earth filled with the knowledge of the glory of the Lord. And this is what I know about the glory. So one of the things the Lord taught me personally is to not be impressive. He said, Candace, don't impress. First Corinthians chapter 2, the Apostle Paul says, Brethren, when I came to you, I came not with excellency of speech, nor of wisdom, declaring unto you the testimony of God. For I determined not to know anything among you, except save Jesus Christ and him crucified. And I was with you in weakness and in fear and in much trembling. And my speech and my preaching was not with enticing words of man's wisdom, but in demonstration of the spirit and of power. Why? That word why is not in there, but I'm giving it to you. Why did he say that? That your faith should not stand on the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. Each one of you are called by God, but you're called to be men and women of faith. You're called to be ones that are willing to go beyond in your faith. Seeing things that others may not see. Grabbing a hold of that which you don't even fully understand nor grasp. But you believe God said it, so therefore, you're going to do it. Then somebody will see the demonstration of his spirit and power. And what's amazing about God is just when you're sure that he's not going to demonstrate anything, especially if you look at yourself, you're like, he's surely not going to demonstrate anything. He begins to start demonstrating. He begins to start healing. He begins to start bringing miracles. He begins to start bringing people to the meeting. Why? Because you just stayed faithful to your faith in God and his greatness and his significance. Now, not only is that one of the principles. Now, now when God says to you, don't be impressive, what he's saying is, and you said it up here during, during uh, the tithe message, the eloquent tithe and offering teaching. 
Take off your mask. Take off your mask. Take off your two faces. Because two faces make us impressive. But the face of God is something that only makes him significant. Right? Now, you have to be trained to have God be significant and not yourself. But here's the key. If the glory comes, only he's significant. The church of Jesus Christ is shifting away from the rock stars, the one man, the one woman. It's the community of believers. Mm -hmm. It's the body of vigilance going forward with the angelic hosts to make a difference in the earth. We're all called for that. The other thing the Lord spoke to me is he says, not only do I not want you to impress, which means you got to take all of it off, but be unseen. How does one be unseen? How does one remove themselves from what God is doing and call it all God? How does one get in a place with God that is so private and so personal when people are watching? I'm teaching you something here. I'm teaching you about the glory. So you got to go to the unseen realm with God. It's a realm where you take it off, all of it off. It's a realm where you find out that you're completely insignificant. And only he is significant. It's, It's not loud and obnoxious. You know when Elijah said, I want to see you, right? There was all the different facets of God that went by. And then where was God? The still small. Have you been blessed by the Glory Road experience? Dr. Candice would love to be able to connect with you as she does with all of her covenant partners in a special way. This Covenant Connection is called the Glory Road Community. By joining this connection group, you will be able to be empowered, enlightened, and spiritually coached by Dr. Smithyman in a more personal way. Go to register today at www.gloryroadcommunity.com. You've been watching The Glory Road with Dr. Candice Smithyman. She can be seen all over the world. If this ministry has been a blessing to you, plant a seed in the ground. You can support by going to CandiceSmitherman.com. Remember, all donations are tax deductible.